Hong Kong-based travel company Cluck has announced that it will be cutting ties with circuses that use wild animals as well as a number of other exploited businesses. Entertainment at the expense of animals has long been seen as the norm. Parents, families, and children have been delighted with the magic that circuses, zoos, and aquariums bring. But now a new movement has emerged where more and more people are against any businesses that exploit animals for the purpose of entertaining the general public. In an attempt to make a change, the company came up with a new animal welfare policy. It outlined a strict commitment to not sell any trips to places that incorporate performances for wild animals, and this included tigers, elephants, whales, and dolphins. Now, businesses like tiger temples and trophy hunting will also be prohibited. Blood sports and experiences involving the consumption or sale of wild animals also fall under these guidelines. Now, while tiger temples were designed to let people interact with the tigers, which was obviously very popular, these wildlife attractions are generally home to a large number of tigers who are kept in small cages. Visitors can have photos taken with the animals and are sometimes allowed to pet and cuddle the animals. Many tourists will feed the tigers and this may be in the form of meat on a stick or it may be a baby bottle for the young cubs. The immoral actions like sedating animals for photo opportunities have shed light on what really goes on in some of these temples. Making the tigers docile was a big part of this operation. The most famous tiger temple was located in the Sayok district in Thailand's province. It was founded in 1994 as a forest temple and sanctuary for wild animals. Among them tigers, mostly Indo-Chinese tigers. It was supposedly run by monks, which was the reason that the tigers were so calm, or at least the public thought. And this meant that the tourists could safely interact with them. As of January 2016, the number of tigers confined at the temple exceeded 150. However, the temple was shut down after allegations of animal abuse and trafficking to Laos. The Thailand Wildlife Conservation Office found the frozen bodies of at least 40 tiger cubs on the premises. Some had been unalived more than five years ago. 20 more cubs were found in the jars of formaldehyde, which is basically a very toxic flammable gas. Two adult tiger pelts, aka skin fur, were also identified, along with the body of a bear and around 1,500 tiger skin amulets, plus other ornaments apparently made from the tiger teeth. Now, the temple bred tigers for commercial purposes and sold tiger parts on the black market. Basically, the interactions between the monks that lived with the tigers are now seen as a clandestine exchange rather than spiritual. While the company has cut ties with a number of exploitive businesses, as we mentioned earlier, some zoos, aquariums, and elephant experiences will still be allowed. And it's important to point out that Many companies that are for the welfare of animals still support these businesses, and Cluck's statement can probably give us some insight as to why they do. Now, a rep from this company actually said, quote, We believe that the most joyful travel experiences are those where visitors can observe wildlife displaying their natural behaviors in an environment that is safe for the animals and our customers, unquote. Nicole Barantes, a wildlife campaign manager at World Animal Protection in the U.S., said in another statement, quote, We applaud Cluck's new animal welfare policy for taking meaningful first steps in helping to end wildlife cruelty and exploitation in the tourism industry. However, Cluck must go further. It must remove all wildlife attractions, including its elephant bathing and feeding offerings, which still involve significant cruelty behind the scenes, unquote. And I couldn't agree more. Now, monkeys, as cute as they are, are kept in small cages where they have no choice but to eat in the same place where they defecate. If you think about it, zoos have a lot more roaming room for monkeys, with its big tree areas and man-made obstacles for the monkeys, but even this is too small. Now, imagine places where the monkeys are kept in just small cages. That is the only place that they spend time with when they're not training and performing. This is basically their home and where they spend the majority of time. Now, elephants are another one I want to quickly touch on. According to numerous sources, because of their majestic size and beauty, they are among the most popular of all the animals and always have been. And for a long, long time now, they've been subject to getting their tusks sawed off for the safety of people that they're about to entertain, as well as for jewelry. Now, circuses in particular have made significant strides to stop using animals in their shows. 
The Ringling Bros and Barnum and Bailey Circus have also removed wild animals from performances and now rely solely on human performances, which is what every single circus should be doing. Now, Sharon Shrine Circus is among the last remaining circuses to still use wild animals. Now, a PETA executive said that, quote, Animals have every bit as much right to a real life as any Shriner, but they're forced to perform stressful tricks in front of noisy crowds in Shrine Circus shows, unquote. Now, most people can agree that PETA goes to extremes, but another expert made a good point. Quote, This is 2023, not 1923. And PETA is calling on Sharon Shriners to fall in line with numerous other shrines by showcasing human performance and ditching the animal acts." Unquote. Now, many countries, including Austria, Denmark, Scotland, Costa Rica, and Peru, have banned the use of wild animals in circuses, while about 20 in total have put restrictions on use of animals. Still, most of the countries where it is now illegal to use wild animals in circuses still have domestic animals, like horses, that continue to be forced to perform. Tigers, and wildcats especially, are the only ones known to fight back. Now, the question of why big cats fight back in circuses is a complex one, but it's not that hard to figure out. And there are many reasons why these animals may exhibit aggressive behavior. But before we keep going, hi, my name is Kim, and welcome to The Green Lab Coat. If you enjoy living a healthy lifestyle backed by science, make sure to subscribe, and don't forget to hit the like button to help the algorithm and the bell to help save the world one human and animal at a time. Let's get started. Now, it's important to note that these cats obviously don't belong in big circuses in the first place. They're often subject to routine abuse and neglect. Now, here are some of the reasons why they might fight back. First off is abuse and punishment. Now, circuses often use abusive training methods to force big cats to perform tricks, such as beating them or withholding the food unless they perform the trick. Now, this can cause the animal to become fearful and aggressive as they associate humans with pain and discomfort. Two is stress and confinement. Now, big cats in circuses are often forced to live in tiny cramped cages and are carted from town to town, depriving them of opportunities to exercise, roam, and play. This can cause them to become stressed and anxious, leading to aggressive behavior. Three is maternal separation. In the wild, young tigers grow up with their mothers, but animals used in circuses, as well as many other places, are often separated from their mothers at a young age, and this causes emotional distress for both the mother and the cub. Now, of course, this will also lead to behavioral problems and aggression. Next is denial of basic needs. Big cats in circuses are often denied their basic social and psychological needs such as the need for alone time and the ability to interact with other animals of their own species. And again, this can lead to fights and injuries. Then there's the Tiger King controversy. Now, despite the controversy, Tiger King was a popular and widely watched series on Netflix, and it brought attention to the issue of big cat ownership and abuse in the United States. Joe Exotic, the person that the show was about, breeded wild cats. This series depicted the mistreatment of abuse of big cats including tigers and lions, by their owners and handlers. Now, the show raised concerns about the ethics of keeping these animals in captivity and using them for entertainment purposes. The way Joe Exotic made money was getting hired to take these big cats to events like malls, zoos, magic shows, etc. Now, clips of Joe Exotic loving on these animals exist, but there's claims of abusing the animals as well, as well as abuse to the workers that worked there. Our world is definitely not a place for wild animals, and that enough puts us in the wrong, unless we're planning to return the animals back to the wild after an injury heals. And on one specific incident, a worker got her arm cut off by a tiger, but because of her love for the tigers, she went back to work for Joe Exotic a month later, where her and every other worker lived in dirty conditions, allegedly ate expired meat from Walmart that the store didn't want anymore, and made only $130 per week, working around 12 hours a day. 
Now, Joe Exotic was convicted of animal abuse and neglect, including killing five tigers and illegally selling tiger cubs. In 2011, an undercover investigation by the Humane Society of the U.S. found that various workers at Joe Exotic's GW Zoo, including Joe himself, were seen routinely beating and punching tiger cubs in the face, dragging them by their necks and tails, and engaging in other abuse. Joe Exotic also ran over Emus in a four-wheeler so he could sell bones to a local museum and shot animals on camera for fun. According to a former employee, Joe Exotic had killed at least 100 animals in the 10 years that she had worked for him. Joe Exotic's animal abuse went far beyond what was shown in the Netflix documentary. So never mind those cute videos that you saw of him cuddling the cubs. Now, to make a long story short, Carol Baskin, owner of Big Cat Rescue in Florida, was doing everything she could to bring Joe's business down due to her supposed love for animals. Now, if you think this story ends with a happy ending, think again, because Carol Baskin also bred tigers and kept tigers in cages. So this whole going after Joe was apparently a big ego trip for her because you don't do that when you really do love animals and fight for their rights. Now, over the next couple of years, rather than helping out the tigers, Joe and Carol got hyper fixed on a war with each other that ended with Joe Exotic behind bars and so many people in the United States disliking Carol Baskin. So what happened to all Joe Exotic's animals, you ask? They got passed down to another crook where the animals are all currently still being bred and used for entertainment. Extremely, extremely disappointing. Businesses that exploit wild animals are becoming increasingly controversial, as we mentioned before, with the general public. Since the release of documentary film Blackfish in 2013, which documented the plight of captive orcas, there has been growing concern about the ethics of businesses that rely on these shows. Now, the UK-based Thomas Cook Travel Company hit headlines in 2018 after stopping excursions to SeaWorld, while Virgin made a similar move the following year. Now, Cook announced that the company will seize ticket sales to any attraction that captivates whales, dolphins, and other sea creatures. Some marine parks have made small steps to reduce the number of animals they keep, and SeaWorld committed to stop breeding orcas in 2016 amid growing public backlash. The company is, however, continuing to keep a number of captive animals at their sites, despite the significant controversy surrounding the practice. Now, at the end of the day, SeaWorld conducts research that backs their own claims, but just keep in mind that they control the results whichever way they want. Jose Luis Barbero, a dolphin trainer, went viral after an undercover activist caught footage of Barbero kicking the dolphin multiple times when training him or her. The whole world had something to say, and while some believe he was being abusive, others thought the camera caught him in a rare moment that is opposite of how he normally treated the animals. Either way, this of course doesn't excuse his behavior at all. Now, after many controversies, SeaWorld is attempting to get better. The killer whale show was once all about the spectacle, but now... Right now, SeaWorld is at a point where we are evolving our killer whale presentations. I think Blackfish was a poignant moment in our company's history for sure. We're definitely still going to have the wow behaviors, but what we're doing is we're explaining the why. But critics argue the whales do not belong in captivity. Just when you think they're going to set them free, all they do is make it sound good. What I want to know is how she's able to say this with a straight face knowing she'll receive backlash, and rightfully so. Now, another expert said that whales were actually being subject to sun without protection given that they don't have the freedom to reach the deep dark sea, and in turn, this is causing cataract damage to their eyes. Additionally, given that they're swimming in chemically altered waters, the orcas turn to teeth grinding for relief, and experts have to manually go in and drill their teeth back in after they fall off. Now, the deprivation then comes in when the trainers withhold food to get the orcas and dolphins to do tricks. In 2013, SeaWorld faced a backlash and saw a decline in its attendance and revenue. Gabriella Cowperthwaite directed the movie. In some ways, we and many other people have kind of forced SeaWorld's hand in a way to make some changes. As Don laid down next to Tillicum, the two seemed as happy as ever. But right when Don turned, Tillicum grabbed Don's hair, pulling her into the water. 
According to the autopsy that was made public, Don had a broken jaw, shattered spine, dislocated elbow, and a dislocated knee. Her scalp was pulled from her skull. Her ribs were fractured and left arm pulled out of her socket. Aside from all this, the boredom these orcas experience have long been one of the main causes of mental health issues that have led to aggression and hurting people as well as their trainers. To see these animals in this circumstance when you've seen one in the wild is utterly incongruent. Now, not only is it being exposed to substantial noise, but the use of the whip and the other people doing it have been so wrong. The rhino, for example, is considered near threatened with roughly 20,000 remaining globally. But this doesn't stop people from using the rhino to serve as entertainment to perform tricks physically enforced by handlers. An expert named Dr. Draper explained that with their naturally nervous and impulsive nature, keeping a rhino in these conditions possesses a threat to humans as well. He said that in the absence of a substantial barrier, the rhino could hurt his trainer or spectators. People who live close to rhinos have actually been cutting off their horns for the purpose of protecting them from poachers. The rhino horn is considered to be so valuable that people after its ivory may look at a rhino like it's not worth it anymore. Now, the Welsh government is set to introduce a bill to prohibit the use of wild animals in traveling circuses, according to First Minister of Wales, Carwin Jones. Quote, the way animals are treated is an important reflection of society. And over the next 12 months, a bill will be introduced to ban the use of wild animals in traveling circuses on welfare grounds, unquote. Now, animal charities have welcomed the news. Jan Kramer, president of Animal Defenders International, said, quote, We congratulate the Welsh government for taking a stand to stop circus suffering in Wales and bringing a UK-wide ban one step closer, unquote. Now, another person said that, quote, ADI has documented suffering and abuse in the UK circuses for many years. Knowing that only a ban can protect them, we are delighted that an end to the use of wild animals and circuses in Wales is finally within sight." Unquote. Now, animal rights charity PETA added that, quote, PETA is thrilled that the Welsh government is making a film committed to banning wild animal circuses. Animal rights charity PETA also added that, quote, PETA is thrilled that the Welsh government is making a firm commitment to banning wildlife circuses, an archaic and patently inhumane form of animal exploitation. Captivity is a living hell for animals such as tigers, zebras, and lions, and a circus environment can't possibly meet their complex needs. They understandably become frustrated, stressed, and depressed from a lifetime of being denied everything that's natural and important to them. They're kept caged in trailers that are hauled around the country, and they're forced to perform confusing tricks under the big top out of some Victorian era idea of entertainment." Unquote. Now, the tide is turning against cruel wild animal circuses. Both Ireland and Scotland have introduced bans. England also announced one that was set to come into effect in 2020. Now, this is welcome news, but the move is already long overdue and animal suffering in circuses shouldn't have to endure another two years of abuse. Now, this is great news. This move has been long overdue and animal suffering in circuses shouldn't have to endure more years from different countries. So while the UK and Europe have passed many, many laws protecting animals, let me know down in the comment section if you think the U.S. should do the same. In the end, the choice is yours.